Alrighty guys, this is your host ID Jester. Thanks for checking out my video. Hope everyone's having a great day. We're going to be looking at roster card. I'm going to do a little tutorial video for you guys on how to use the roster card Excel helper file. We can really help you manage and play the game uh, quickly and easily if you own Microsoft Excel. That's the only thing you need to do. And obviously you have to uh, own and purchase a roster card season. So uh, if you're unfamiliar with roster card, I would highly recommend you go to baseballdicegames.com. You're going to find three different baseball games. Each of them have their own niche and uh, complexity with them. Uh, there's Fall Classic, there's Play Ball, and there's Roster Card. Actually, Roster Card is a really good price. Uh, you can get one season for $5. You can get tw uh, uh five seasons for 20, 10 seasons for 30, or you can get all 118 seasons for $99. And uh, the uh, designer developer will email those to you. And uh, once you get them, uh, you can ask the gentleman that designed and developed the game for the Excel helper files for your seasons that you purchase. And they're gonna really help you manage the game uh, on the computer really well. Now I've run a few uh, card and dice games of roster card here on my channel and I really didn't have that much of a problem to be honest. But I guess some people do have problems running it on with with cards and dice. Um, what's not really cards or just sheets and dice. We'll call it a sheets and dice game. All right. <laughs> so uh, I didn't have any problems with that. So what I'm going to do is do a little tutorial on how to get uh, your roster card set up for you and maybe uh, a few things that you should know uh, for uh, if you decide to purchase Rustic Card and you can actually see it in action and how cool and simple it is to actually run it on the computer. So, uh, so I've got my uh, Excel helper file here, as you can see, and uh, there's our lineups and everything. It does come default with the 1976 season in it uh, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to actually import our, well, we'll say we bought the 2010 season, right? So we're going to import our 2010 season and um, bring that information up. And you can see uh, all the data and stuff that we need to get into our other Excel file. So before we actually start, we, uh, we don't want to do anything with our original files. Never, ever, ever do anything with your original files. So what I've done is create a uh, folder here and I'm going to highlight my files. I'm going to drag them into my folder. I'm going to say copy here, right? So I've copied them into there. So if I go into my 2010 season file and I enable editing, right? And I ended up deleting a bunch of data and saying save, All right? Now, if I go back in that season file, you can see all my data is missing. Oh my gosh, I screwed up. No. All I have to do is just go back to my original file and drag it in here, copy it in there, replace the destination file with that one, and all the data will be back. So you want to make sure you never, ever use your original files for anything. Always use a backup copy so you can always go back to the originals uh, in case something happens. You never just assume that, oh, I, I know what I'm doing, I'll be fine, because if you screw it up... <laughs> Uh, and then you'll run into problems and it won't be, uh, you won't have a backup to resort to in case something happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to open our roster card here and you can see there are some tabs here. There's some instruction tabs that kind of show you how to do things, which we're going to show you how. There's the way dugout, which basically takes all of the information in the way loader and copies it, it kind of busses it over into the dugout, right? And this is gonna be where all of our main data is. And then there's the in between the lines, which shows us uh, when we actually play the game. Uh, then there's the home dugout. We have a score sheet, which is tall, a score sheet, which is wide, the loader files, and then the ouch charts and the hit charts. And then of course, all the 1976 stuff, which we don't need anymore. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that stuff. So we're just going to click on the tab and we're going to hold our control key down and we are just going to go along the bottom here and use the little arrows and scroll back and forth until we've got all of our tabs highlighted. 
And of course, I can use my little left and right arrows just to make sure I got everything done. And then I'm going to right click on one of the tabs and I'm going to say delete and yes, delete. So you can see all we have left is our charts and our loaders and our way dugouts and our instructions and everything like that. So what I would do at this point is I would save a new copy of this and I'm going to call this Ostercard Excel Helper. Uh, we'll just call this base, right? So this is your base one. This is the this is the one that you can use to import all your other seasons into now. All right. So now what we have to do is we're going to leave this uh, Excel sheet open, and we're going to open up our season file. And there it comes. And you can see with our little arrow here, the only thing that comes in the season file are the actual season tabs, right? So I'm just going to highlight again all of the season tabs and just uh, hold the control key down. As long as I hold the control key down, every little tab I click on will be highlighted. And I'm just going to make sure, use the little arrows to make sure I'm getting all of them. Go all the way to the right. There we go. And I got them all. Now what I'm going to do is right click one of the tabs. doesn't matter which one, any one of them. I'm going to say move or copy. And if you left open your other Excel file, when you click this little down arrow, you should see roster card Excel helper base. That's what we're looking for, right? So we're going to copy it in there. And now it's going to ask us, where do we want to put it in? What I like to do is move them all the way to the very end. So they're going to be all the way at the on the right side <clears throat> like they were to begin with. We're going to say, okay. And it's going to ask you, it's going to say, this already exists. Are you sure? Yes. Yes. Yes, these are all these scripts and stuff that runs in the background uh, for um, the original program. And it's asking you, do you want to just use what's already there or do you want to import the ones you have? Just say yes to everything. It'll be about 10 or 15 that pop up. And once you're done, you'll see it just bloop. And it'll close our 2018 season file. And now we've got, as we see, our 2010 Red Sox and 2010 Detroit, blah, blah, blah. Now, what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to save this as, browse. I'm going to call this Roster Card Excel Helper 2010s. And now this one's got the base information, and now I've added the 2010 season. And I've got two backups in case I screw up anything. All right. So there we go. If you go actually go into the away dugout, you will notice it still has the 1976 Houston Astros. And it currently has the 1976 Cincinnati Reds because those were what was default in the game. And that's based upon the away loader and the home loader still are loading these informations in. So what we have to do is just find our teams. And we're going to have um, we're going to have uh, Boston is the away team. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Boston tab. I'm going to hold the control key down, the shift key down, and I'm going to hit A. A is in away. A is in away because they're the away team. And when I do that, if you go to the away loader, you will notice we scroll up. It has changed what was in there to the 2010 Boston Red Sox. And now it's bust that information over into the away dugout. So now we have all of our information in there. And Boston is playing at Cleveland, so I'm going to click on the Cleveland tab. I'm going to hit the Control Shift H, H for home, H is for home. So I'm going to hold the Control and Shift keys down. I'm just going to hold them down, and I'm just going to hit the H key. And if we go to the home dugout, it has the 2010 Cleveland Indians, and it has uh, in the, uh, um, the uh, home loader there, is all of our information for the Cleveland Indians there. All right. So once we get our information into the dugouts, this is where we are going to manage our two teams. All right. So anything we want to do, we want to change from our dugouts, right? If we're going to take somebody in or out or whatever, we want to do them from the dugouts. We don't want to do them from the loaders. Okay. So you just want to, you want to manage your dugouts, which makes sense, right? All right. So, uh, a couple of words of note about the roster card Excel helper file up here at the top. This information up here at the top, don't ever, ever click on or change this information. All this does 
is reference the information that you're sending it from these uh, uh, players from down below, okay? So uh, let's clean this up a little bit before we get started. So what I'm going to do is all these ones that have these pound signs, I'm just going to highlight them all, and I'm going to hit delete key so it clears them all out. Same thing down here. I'm going to change where it says PIT. I'm just going to call that capital P. I'm not sure why it says PIT. Uh, I guess that's short for pitcher, but P is good enough for me. And then I'm going to highlight that. And now it clears all that stuff up. Everything looks good. And I'm actually going to take this and I'm just going to slide it over a little bit so all the names fit in nice and perfectly. There we go. So we got everything looking looking sharp there in the away dugout. So uh, let's, we'll do the same thing in the home dugout as well. Now, you can see the home dugout didn't put all those funky little things in there, but it uh, looks like they did down here. And we want to call this P, right? And then we're going to take all this information out. All right. So how does this all operate? Again, you don't ever want to touch, the, touch this upper section. Never, 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 ever, ever. All that does is reference the information on your lineups and your pitcher section. Same thing with the away. Your lineups and your pitcher section. That's the only thing you should deal with. So your lineups are very simple, right? This information is basically saying this player is in position one and batting number two is B. Euclid, batting number three is Pedroia, batting number four is uh, Satora, batting number five is Beltre, batting number six is Navarra, batting number seven is McDonald, batting eight is J.D. Drew, batting ninth is, oh, we have a problem because it can't find anybody. If we look, you can see we have no position nine listed anywhere, right? So we'll just say, uh, we'll put uh, David Ortiz is number nine, and we got to now give him a position, which is going to be ultra important, right? It's going to be ultra important. So your positions are, oops, take that off, D8, there we go. So obviously 1B, 2B, 3B, SS, C, P, LF, CF, RF, and DH. These are all your valid positions. If for some reason I don't give, uh, let's say, our left fielder a position, right? When I go between the lines and I scroll down to the home team that's playing, which is the Indians, out in the field will be the Boston Red Sox. And you can see in left field, it shows nobody there, right? It shows nobody there in that field, so I've got to I gotta fix that. So I go to the way dugout and I gotta say, oh well, who's the left fielder? It's gonna be this uh, Daniel Nava. All right, so now when I go back, look, Daniel Nava's there. Again, all that happens is you put the numbers in here and it populates this information up here with all their stats and everything ready to go for you. And you can just, you know, double check. You can click on the away team, you can click on the home team, and just verify that everything is working. Here's where the pitcher section is located. You can see there's just a bunch of pound signs right there for both teams right now. And that's because we haven't set up our pitchers. So we have to scroll down to the pitcher section, right? And we got to decide who's pitching for the day. And we're going to put a P in there. Pitcher, John Lester for the day. Now when I go back, go to the home team, Pitcher uh, Lester is pitching for the visiting team, and they have all their players there. We'll do the same thing with the home dugout. We will say it's going to be uh, uh, Justin Madison. Sure, that's oh, uh, see, I put that P in there, and I didn't mean to. So luckily, I can undo that. There we go. Click on that. There's our P. And if I go back between the lines and I go to the home. Uh, to the visiting team, you can see Justin Masterson is now pitching in there. We have all of our players assigned to the different positions, left field, center field, right field, third base, shortstop, second base, first base, the catcher, and of course, all the pitcher information is located over here. Uh, so this is how you actually play the game. Uh, if you have, if you're not playing with the DH, obviously what you want to do is you want to put your pitcher. We're going to say in this case it's going to be John Lackey. We are going to put our number nine on John Lackey and make sure it says P there, right? 
And then when we go between the lines, you can see John Lackey is listed there. Right? And if we go to the home team, you can still see John Lester. Oh, uh, that's right, because uh, you also have to switch down here at the bottom. You want to make sure the same pitcher is at bat and the same pitcher is pitching. So up in the top section in your lineup, you want to make sure you have a number next to the pitcher and the pitcher, the P for the pitcher. This is if they're batting. If you're not, if you're playing a season without the DH or you're playing the National League, the better, smarter league, then you want to, you know, not use a DH. This is how you set it up. So you're going to have one through nine. You're going to have a pitcher, a catcher, first base, second base, third base, short, left field, right field, and center field. Uh, if you're playing in the American League with the DH, then obviously same thing, one through nine, but you're going to have the DH instead of the P. So that's the only difference there. Again, if you're playing the National League, make sure your pitcher down at the bottom is selected with a P and also selected up here at the top with the position P. If you're doing the DH, right, if I'm doing the DH and I'm making uh, David Ortiz, right, if I'm using David Ortiz as the DH, then I don't need to have the pitcher have a number up here, but I do need to have the pitcher have a P down at the bottom. And if we go between the lines, uh, we go to the home team. You can see it still shows John Lackey there. And it shows our, uh, um, we go to the away team and it'll show uh, David Ortiz as the DH. So that's how you manage, that's how you manage all that stuff. Um, and then uh, we'll get to uh, playing the game. So uh, you basically over here is on the right, he's going to be your charts. Uh you can score it with a piece of paper. You can score it with I score, ball score. You can just keep it in your head. However, you normally do things. Uh, but basically, you're going to um, go to batter number one. So that's Victor Martinez. And you're going to roll the dice. These are the two 10 sided dice, which gives you a number between 0, 0, and 99. And then this is your six sided dice here. Uh, and you can click this and see every time I click this, over on the right side, it'll also roll random number, uh, the D6 and the D10 for your runner advancement on outs and uh, all that. So, uh, you know, every time I click that, so what I would do is I would say, okay, we're going to start the first inning. Victor Martinez is up. He's up against Justin Matcherson, and we're going to roll the dice and click. 35, I'm going to say that is an out. I'm going to look over here. It's ground ball the third. And then I click on next batter. Now watch what happens down here. Victor Martinez goes away. It goes to number two, and that's based upon our Kevin Euclid is, is you know batting second, right? And it brings up Kevin Euclid for us. And we just say, okay, roll the dice. A roll the 13. So 13 is a single. So Euclid goes to first base. And uh, depending on if you're doing uh, auto steals or managerial steals or whatever i'm just gonna not try to steal or anything but we go to the next batter dustin pedroia and now we'll roll boom 24 that is a walk so we have runners at first and second one away next batter marco Sotoro. uh yeah whatever and we got runners at first and second one away and he rolls a 33 that is going to be an out it's going to be out and we have a ground out to first base, so the runners are going to move up to second and third with two away. We go to the next batter, uh, Adrian Beltre. Runners at second and third, two away, and he rolls the 36. And once again, that is another out. That's ground ball to short, and that's going to do it for the inning. So uh, what I have, all I have to do now is click on the button that says "Go to Home," and it'll if you size your screen properly it'll just flip it over so what i would i would do is bring up your tab like that right and then your tab over here on the right end edge and just you want to box you want to basically box in the the big black border so whenever you click this you just switch back and forth no problems right so we're in the bottom of the first inning we continue all right so that's as simple as it is i'm playing the 2010 season didn't take very long um here's one thing that um 
I will kind of give you a, uh, some information about, and you can use it or not use it. For some reason, all, you notice that all of these stats for the player are missing. They're basically not missing, but they've been kind of defaulted out by the designer because I don't know if he thinks it's too busy down here or whatever. But if you want to have those numbers show up, I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, all you have to do is go up to the file section and you can see how the protected worksheet is all yellow. We want to unprotect it, right? So you want to unprotect the worksheet and go back. So now the worksheet is unprotected and I can just go in and highlight those, highlight those uh, boxes there. And I'm going to come up here to my font and I'm going to say, I want my black font. Boom. Oops. So there's my black font. So basically the numbers are just hidden from you. I, uh, you know, if you find it too busy, then you can always come in and say, you know what, I want to highlight these and I want to make them white, right? So I can't see them again if, there's, if, there's, if it's too busy for you. But the things that I want to make sure I see is uh, what everybody's rating on sacrifice hitting and their hit and run ratings are. And if I can't see that information coming up, I can't make good decisions on whether or not uh, you know, I should try and steal, and then I find out, oh, the guy that was coming up was, a, you know, an A hit and run. Oh my gosh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have tried to steal, you know, so I want to see that information. So you unprotect the worksheet, and then you can just go in and color code everything. Obviously, you're going to have to do that for both sides, and we will do that. And uh, also text, there we go, text. So uh, so let's see, uh, other things that I like to do is, uh, let's see if I can find a picture that has a weird, a lot of pictures have the, um, ratings. Let's see if I can find a picture that's got one of those wacky ratings that you need to make sure, um, Let's see, walk, strikeout. Okay, so J Jason Papelbon. We're going to actually pitch Jason Papelbon. Now, this is interesting, okay? If I put a P on Jason Papelbon, right, and I go back to between the lines, uh, you, you sh should you see it brought in Jason Papelbon, but make sure you don't have multiple Ps because it can really screw up the game. So just delete the other P here. And of course, if you're playing in the National League, you're going to have to make your change up here at the top. If you're playing in the American League, all you have to do is just change the pitcher down here. Uh, so I see Jason Pampelbon here has got that crazy K rating. So <clears throat> 80 to 89 is a strikeout. And also 40, 41, 42, and 43 are also strikeouts. So what I like to do is uh, click on that box there and actually make it red so that way it stands out to me so when I'm batting hopefully I'll look over and what, what's going on with that what's that number of oh it's a 43 right right I have to remember and hopefully that will refresh your memory now obviously when you bring in a new pitcher um, you know let's say we're bringing Tim Wakefield here um, and he doesn't have that crazy rating, obviously you wanna just take it back to default settings. So to get the default settings, you have to go to more colors, and I think it's the third one down. Nope, it's a, it's the, uh, it's gonna be the uh, more colors, and gosh, which one was it? Second one? Yeah, it was just, it's, it's the one, uh, not at the very corner, but it's one over from the one that's in the very corner, and it'll blend in with everything else there. All right. Uh, so, you know, if there's other things that you think, you know, that are kind of important, like I always kind of forget where the home run ratings are, you might want to change those into, you know, some other colors that maybe, um, you know, might stand out for you, you know. I might use like a, well, a yellow looks kind of nice, right? So we'll use the yellow. It kind of stands out a little bit. But remember, this these changes you made, though, are only on this sheet, right? Because we're only using the 2010 sheet. So the next time 
I set up the game with that other base file. Um, I'm going to have to redo everything. So I would make all your changes that you like uh, on your base file before you start copying your season files in. So that way you don't have to do it on each individual season. Uh, and again, it's all, you know, kind of preferences at this point, what you want to what you want to add in, uh, what you, you know, whether or not you want to see the, the numbers uh, or anything like that. So, you know, you're going to go through your inning, you're going to click on the home tab, right? And then, uh, oh, we're at number seven, but we want to be a batter one. So you can just click next batter, next batter, next batter, and you get to number one. Or you can just simply click on the space, hit one, and hit enter, and it'll automatically take you to batter number one and put in all their information. So we got batter number one, roll the dice, 64. 64 is a hit. So Valbuena is on first, next batter, Johnny Peralta. He rolls a 77. It's outside the walk range, so that is going to be an out. It's a fly ball to left. So one out, runner at first, next batter, Sinso Chu. He rolls a 95. So we're going to be testing the third baseman. And for us, we can see all the informations over here. He has got a good range, average range, I guess. Uh, no, he's got excellent range, right? The stars are excellent range. The commas are average range, and the explanation points are bad range. So being a star, he's got really good range. He'll get to it. So it's going to be an out. Ground out to third base, and we had a runner at first, so it's going to be first, second to first on a double play. So, uh, so we're through one complete inning. Back to the away team. Boom, just like that. Back and forth, back and forth. Quick and easy, as long as you, uh, you know, manage and set up everything. So, highly recommend roster card. Quick, nice, interesting little game. Um, you know, not super complex. You can get a game done in probably 15 or 20 minutes it's not very like i said not super complex you're just looking at the numbers the excel file actually helps because uh, it's going to just put that information right there for you of course i want to save this now that i've got it as my 2010 i want to save this and i'm just going to call roster card helper 2010 that's fine and I am good to go. I can play a game again uh, to get my next, you know, once I complete my Boston and Cleveland game, maybe it's the White Sox are headed out to Detroit. And I want to play that. So I click on the White Sox. They're going to be the visiting team, the away team. So control shift A, right? And the home team is Detroit. So I click on their team, control shift H, right? Then all I have to do is go back to the dugouts, put in the one through, oops, Oops, don't do that. Let's undo that. Um, put in the one to nine in who's, you know, whoop, who's in which position. Uh, make sure each of them have a position. And as you put the numbers in, you will see them starting to fill up here. So if I use Raymond Castro, he's the, the number one batter and he's in left field. Right? You will see the information populate. Number two will be. Um, Jason Nix, right? And he is the third baseman. And then number four will be Andrew Jones. And he, up uh, oh, number three will be Andrew Jones. And he'll be the DH, right? And then you just continue with your lineup. Get your lineup for both the home team and the away dug team. Then you want to go down, make sure you select your pitcher, and you're ready to go. Boom, boom, boom. And you're rolling another game. So uh, that's how quick and simple it is. You, you know, it's harder to just uh, find a score sheet uh, to score your games in. It'll be harder than actually playing the games, which is super nice, super, super nice. So definitely check out um, Roster Card and pick you up some seasons. Like I said, you can, uh, you can definitely um, get the Excel helper file uh, for free uh, when you purchase a season. Uh, just include an email to that designer and say you ordered the, you know, the 2010 to 2018 seasons and you'd like the roster card helper file and the season files so that you can play this on the computer. So hopefully that'll help everyone out there. 
uh, get in and play some roster card. Again, I play the card in dice version just fine. Excel file is, like I said, super good. I actually play this and score it on my phone and I score. And I can get a game done. Uh, I might actually do a game for you guys uh, live here. Um, uh, you know, in the next day or two. And you guys can check it out if you want to see uh, how everything is done uh, with iScore and on the uh, Excel. And it might be a good setup for yourself. Um, you know, if you are somebody that wants to play it without having to find the players on the sheet. Again, I don't. I don't have any problems. I've played a couple games on my channel with uh, the sheets and the sheets work great and I didn't have any problems finding the players uh, and it flowed really well and we were up and running in just a minute uh, and we're ready to go. So it's uh, all in your preference of what you want to do. So, all right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for joining me and we'll see you guys next time. Definitely check out Roster Card though and the other games uh, Fall Classic, we've been playing Fall Classic here on my channel. Uh, the 1992 Pittsburgh Pirates replay, we've got about five or six games of that. And we did a couple games a while ago on Roster Card as well. So if you want to check out these games, uh, feel free to uh, leave any thoughts and comments below. And we'll see everyone next time. Thanks for watching, guys.